Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, well, I thank everybody for joining us here at the for the Vida Union Educational Conference as part of the 2021 Virtual Southeast Regional Fruit and Vegetable Conference. I'm Jason Enfield. I'm the Toombs County Extension Agent uh, with the University of Georgia, and I will be serving as the moderator uh, for this presentation. A uh, couple quick housekeeping items. Uh, pesticide and CEU, credit, CEU and CCA credits are available for most presentations offered during the live Southeast Regional Conference. Uh, check the Pesticide CEU guide for a list of approved presentations as well as the participating states. The Pesticide CEU guide is located in the Events Resources tab under the Media Player. The guide is also available at the Resources Center located on the main menu of the conference platform. Please note, bedside credits will only be available for one, registered attendees, and two, for all uh, only during the live conference. Credits will not be available for on-demand viewing. There is a simple three-step process to receive pesticide CEU and CCA credits. First, go to the audience chat box located on the left side of your screen and type your first and last name and the state or states for which you are requesting credits. Again, go to the audience chat box located on the left side of your screen and type your first name, last name, and the state or states for which you are requesting credits. You will need to do this for every presentation to request CEU credits. The second step is at the end of the presentation to sign out. To sign out, you will again go to the audience chat box and type your first and last name in the state or states for which you are requesting credits. You will be reminded to sign out at the end of the presentation. The third step is to complete the pesticide CEU registration. You only have to do this one time during the conference. This is not required with every presentation. To access the Pesticide CEU Registration web link, open the Pesticide CEU Guide on the Events Resources tab located under the Media Player. The Pesticide CEU Registration web link is located on the front cover of the guide. This presentation is pre-recorded to reduce technical difficulties. We will be answering your questions live at the end of the presentation. You can submit a question at any point during the presentation by typing your question in the question box and pressing send. Don't forget to thank our 2021 conference sponsors and exhibitors by visiting the virtual trade show and the featured products pavilion. Lastly, don't forget to join us each morning for coffee, chats, and each evening for networking. Check the conference agenda for details. And with that, I would like to introduce our speaker, uh, Dr. Babesh Duda, who is our UGA vegetable pathologist. Um, and he is going to update us on onion diseases. Uh, again, uh, Dr. Duda has been serving as our vegetable pathologist for several years. Uh, and of course, as many of you know, and I know firsthand, it seems like every year we, we battle something different and something new when it comes to onion diseases. Uh, so it's always great when we have Dr. Duda to uh, uh, able to come in and to uh, update us on uh, what's currently going on uh, with our disease issues. With that, I'll turn it over to uh, Dr. Duda. Well, thank you, Jason. Uh, it is my privilege to be here and present my update on onion, fungal and bacterial diseases. So the idea of my presentation here today is to give main points and snapshots of some of the key uh, things that we observed and we learned over the last couple of years. To start with, uh, the first disease which I'm going to mention today is Botrytis leaf blight. Botrytis leaf blight is an endemic disease which we see in our Vidalia onions every year. Although the severity and the, white and, the, and the spread of this disease varies year to year. Uh, 2020 was not severe for botrytis leaf blight, but we did have some stem filium that came after botrytis. So with respect to fungicides, I do fungicide trial every year. Either I, I 
test efficacy of individual fungicides or I test uh, fungicides in the form of programs. So this slide shows the efficacy of individual fungicides which are labeled on our onions. So I screened Roveral, Scala, Lunar Tranquility, Omega 500, Mervis Prime, and Mary Vaughan. Look at the last column. That's total disease severity uh, in a season. And if you see that all of these fungicides did well compared to our non-treated check. In our non-treated check plots, we had nearly 100% disease incidence. Whereas the, uh, the efficacy of Roveral and Scala was significantly lower than the non-treated check. But when we looked at the efficacy of all these fungicides together, we found that fungicides like Lunar Tranquility, Omega 500, Mervis Prime, and Merivon had upper hand. They did quite well compared to Roveral. The, the surprising thing it was with Scala. This is the first time when Scala slipped. Scala, uh, Scala did okay, but it was as good as Roveral. So we have to be very careful this season. Especially, I I will be doing some uh, will be doing several screening trials with Scala and see if the if the observations which we made in 2020 was 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 correct. And then on the other hand, I'll also be doing some resistance screening with Scala and seeing and assess if it's still sensitive, if our botrytis is still sensitive to Scala. So something to think about. This is what we are recommending, that if you have a fungicide programs where you rotate with Lunar Tranquility, Omega 500, Inspire Super, and Mervis Prime, and Mary Vaughan, it will cover your base. Now, with respect to fungicides, different fungicides in different combinations in a program, so we tested nearly six different programs that comprise of different combinations of Luna Tranquility Inspired Super, Scala, Omega 500, Mervis Prime, and Quad Stop and Tilt. Uh, what we found that the programs where we had Luna Tranquility Inspired Super, Omega 500, or Mervis Prime, uh, or, or um, Scala, it did quite well. Uh, the programs where we had K fight or any kind of phosphites as an as a tank mix with Mervis Prime or Inspire Super, it did not give any kick to our botrytis program. But addition of K fight, I'm going to come in my subsequent slide. Addition of K fights or phosphite, any phosphite will pro will provide you some degree of potential protection against against downy mildew. So this is our recommendations in, uh, for botrytis leaf blight include using Luna Tranquility, Inspire Super. Omega 500 and Mervis Prime in rotation. All right. So the important, the most important and dreadful disease which we can think about in onions is downy mildew. Although it is sporadic, and we were lucky that last year uh, uh, we had just small localized outbreak in a couple of farms. But in 2019, it was quite widespread, but it was moderate. Now, downy mildew is different from botrytis. Downy mildew is an oomycid. It loves free leaf moisture. Whenever we have free leaf moisture, we get this pathogen. We do not understand where this pathogen survives. We do not understand where the pathogen propagules come from in Vidalia. So, but the million dollar question is how we can control this disease. Uh, we don't have much options. The options uh, 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 which we have is uh, very specific options like Omega 500, Orondis Ultra, Bravo, and Zampro, and phosphates. So in 2019, uh, we did a trial in Growers Field in conjunction with Jason Eaton Field, and we screened different fungicides and the program and so forth. We found Omega 500 and Orondis Ultra to be moderately effective. I'm not saying highly effective, moderately effective. Bravo, Zampro are moderate to low in their efficacy against this pathogen. And what we have seen that addition of phosphites, any phosphite to any of these fungicides will give you some kick. The other important thing is that 
the fungicides like Pericor Flex, Ranman, Reason, Revas, and Presidio do not have any efficacy in our trials. And this is our second year of trial. We did not see any efficacy with any of these uh, lower fungicides. So what we recommend to our growers, uh, under conditions which are favorable for downy mildew, which we see around March, late March, early April, rely on your heavy heaters like Omega 500 and around the Seltra and either rotate or tank mix with the uh, Bravo or, or, or your phosphide. You can also break the rotation with addition of Zampro if you want. I'm switching my gears now. I'm gonna go talk about a little bit of update on our battle disease management. We have done a lot of work on battle disease management over the years. So I'm gonna give you some snapshots. So before I go over the battle disease management, I'm gonna show you some of the important symptoms and important diseases uh, which we saw uh, last couple of years in our Vidalia region. So last year was pretty bad around March and uh, early April because we had initiation rain followed by good I mean, uh, by temperatures around eight, uh, high 80s or, or upper nine or, or, or lower 90s. And we started to see these kind of symptoms, these bleached out leaves and so forth. Uh, this symptom can be caused by multiple pathogens. We saw some pentoia, we saw some pectobacterium, which is a soft rotter, and we also saw slippery skin causing bacterium called Burkholderia gladiuli. Oh, sorry. We also saw a good bit of center rot, which uh, this is the old slide, but this is a typical symptom of center rot uh, in, in foliage. Early in the season, we st in, especially in January and February, we saw buccal streak and bulb rot caused by pseudomonas viridae flavor, mainly foliar symptoms. We did not see any uh, bulb symptoms, but in severe cases, this is just an example, in severe cases, you can also see this bulb symptom. Look at the look at how the bulb symptom differs from the symptom which you observe with center rot or burkholderia. You'll see a greenish tinge in your bulb when you cut it open. That's because of pseudomonas viridae flavor. We have seen a lot of Burkholderia this year. We, this, is a, this is a typical Burkholderia soft rot uh, in the bulb, which we, we observed. So last year, uh, with the help of county extension agents and, uh, and Chris Tasson, we did a survey of five to eight different commercial onion fields. And we wanted, wanted to see what different types of bacteria are actually lurking around in these fields or, or in these fields. And, uh, and, and how many of these are actually pathogenic? We in fact tracked uh, the, the onions from the field to storage and we sampled every month, sometimes twice a month, and looked at the distribution of the uh, bacterial strains uh, uh, isolated from those particular fields. So what I'm giving you the summary of this survey. What we found in January and February the majority of the diseased onion or diseased onion seedling were caused by, were either by pseudomonas, vediflava or yellowbird. So you can see in January, we have 86% of the samples with pseudomonas and a little bit of xanthomonas. In February, we have 67% of, sam of uh, samples were pseudomonas and a little bit of pentoia started to kick in in February. But look at March and April, we had a lot of pentoias. Nearly 64% of the samples were pentoia in March nearly 68% of, of samples were pentoia in, in April. But story changes when you hit May and June in storage. What we found in storage, there's a lot of buccal areas. Nearly 65% of our samples, stored samples from all these eight different storage units, we, had, we found buccal areas, followed by pentoia and some of these uh, soft rotters. So this means that in our region, there is, a, there, is a, there is a seasonality to these diseases. In early in the season, we see pseudomonas, mid-season, we see pentoas, and later on, we see a lot of burkholderias. All right, how to control these diseases? So based on the uh, uh, inputs from our growers and from our county extension agents, 
we did a trial where we screened whatever copper product we had in the market. In addition to it, we also screened oxidate with some of our growers use. And we also screened LEAP and ACTIGAR, which are your defense inducers. And in addition, we also added a soft product called LifeGuard. LifeGuard is a biocontrol. It is actually armory level. So we did this trial and we looked at the severity of uh, center rot on foliage as well as uh, bulb rot symptoms in storage. So I'm not going to go through all this severity in the foliage, foliar stuff, but look at the last column. This is a bulb rot. This is a very important thing, bulb rot incidence. So the, the plots where we have not spread any of this copper product, any of this thing, we had nearly 75% rot, bulb rot. Where are the pl whereas the plots where we had some kind of copper, either Nordox or Master Cop or New Cop or Mancoside or Champ or Coside, we had significant reduction of the disease. But among the copper product, Mancoside numerically was the best. Mancoside is a premix of Coside and, man and Manzet. Uh, Nordox, the, we did not find much significant difference between Coside or Champ or Nordox or so forth. They all performed well. Now, with respect to oxidate, some of the growers use oxidate. This is a sanitizer. Oxidate uh, did reduce the bulb rot incidence, but it was not significant. But in fact, we had a lot of phytotoxicity when we use oxidate at this particular rate. Uh, the important thing, the one interesting thing which we found with the soft product here, like LifeGuard, LifeGuard also reduced the disease incidence kind of significantly as that of copper. So LifeGuard performed as good as copper, which was quite interesting. Uh, the other important point which I would like to make, ActiGuard, a leap, the defense inducers, do not do much. They did not significantly reduce the disease incidence in the bulb. So what are the take home message here? ActiGuard and LEAP do not work against uh, the battle pathogens, which we see here in Vidalia region. All copper products are comparable. They can be used. Among the copper products, we saw a little bit better efficacy with mancocide. Oxidate, you need to use oxidate very carefully. Otherwise, you'll get ox uh, phytotoxicity. But with respect to uh, their efficacy on, on bacterial diseases, we did not see any. LifeGuard is a soft product. It seems like it has some good, uh, some uh, level of efficacy against bacterial pathogens. To, to look LifeGuard into detail, we'll, we compared the LifeGuard with Coside and also uh, in a program with Coside. What we found, whenever we use LifeGuard or uh, LifeGuard in a, alone or in a program and compared it with a solo application of Coside and Nordox, we had a significant reduction of bulb, uh, significant reduction of center rot. So it means LifeGuard is indeed uh, uh, a good product, good product, and and I think it can be used as a rotation partner. This is this first year when I were first year, but the two trials, two different trials in 2020, where we have seen LifeGuard is showing its efficacy. So something to think about. Moving forward, you all know that for bacterial diseases, cultural practices play a role but we do not know how different culture practices or what type of culture practices impact different bacterial diseases. So in conjunction with the help of our county extension agents and Chris Tyson, we did a, did a trial where we evaluated different digging methods and different harvesting methods. So for digging methods, we, did, we collected onions that were either uh, chain digged or that were, uh, a dig, that were dug by uh, Mm, straight blade undercutter. So we saw significant reduction of center rot bulb incidence and sour skin bulb incidence whenever we use a chain digger compared to straight blade undercutter. We do not understand uh, the philosophy behind it or reasoning behind it, but this is observation we made. We're going to repeat this trial again, maybe in multiple uh, growers field and see if this is true. Uh, with respect to harvesting method, we looked, we compared the me mechanical harvesting with manual harvesting, and it was a kind of a surprise to us that we found significantly less bulb rot incidence with mechanical harvest, both center rot and sour skin. The bulb rot significantly reduced with mechanical harvest compared to the manual harvest. 
But with manual harvest, what we were noticed that while harvesting, while clipping the onion bulbs, some of these workers, they were clipping the onion bulbs very close to the shoulder and the neck. As a result, it's, it might have predisposed the onions to, uh, to further storage rot. So these are, the some, these are the things which we'll be evaluating this season. Well, this is a snapshot of a agent trial. This is the fourth year of agent trial where we, are, where we uh, looked at the bactericide program and, come, and, and also tested the efficacy of thrips program. So the idea was that can a thrips program along with the bactericide program be superimposed and we can, can we get a better efficacy compared to when we just used only bactericide program. So I'm gonna show you a snapshot. So on the left-hand side, look at this, this graph. This is the, this graph, this, uh, this bar graph suggests the center rod bulb incidence. And this is the, whenever, this is with the battery sides. Whenever we used battery sides without a thrips program, we had a significant increase in bulb rot compared to when we do not use, when we use thrips program. Okay, I'm gonna repeat again. Whenever we used thrips program overlapped with a battery side program, we had significant reduction in bulb incidence compared to when we do not use thrips program and relied only on battery sites. Okay. There is a look at the right two graphs. This is a breakup of a coside and Nordox. Um, so when we use Nordox or coside, we, we made similar observations that efficacy of coside and Nordox increase with reduction uh, whenever we use a thrips management program overlaid. As a result, we had a significant reduction in bulb incidence. So the take home message is that whatever co copper, pro copper program, program you wanna use, you can use it, but make sure you use a good thrips management program. So this year we are overlaying bactericide management program with thrips management program plus an herbicide management program. We wanted to see can a good weed control impact or increase the efficacy of whatever program which you are using against bacterial diseases. So uh, with this, I'd like to conclude my presentation. I'd like to thank all the onion growers for their help and support, all the uh, Widerly Onion County Extension agents, and especially our area onion agent, Chris Tyson, uh, to, uh, uh, to help us with all these things. Well, I just want to reiterate all these trials, whatever I have shown, has been done in conjunction with these county extension agents. Without them, we could not achieve what we have uh, able to and uh, provide this good information. So I will turn it over to Jason. Thank you, Babesh. Uh, we are now going to uh, answer a few questions. If you have any from our audience, again, uh, type your questions into the question box and press send if you have any questions. Uh, also, as a reminder, if you are requesting pesticide credits from this presentation, do not forget to sign out of this presentation. Go to the audience chat box, type your first and last name and the state or states where you are requesting credits. And with that, uh, we'll see if we will have any questions and take our first questions. Do we have any questions? All right, we have a question here. It says, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Duda, if growers are interested in using a biological bacteria side, how should we use it and in, a, in what program with copper? That's a very good question. Uh, we tried for the first time last year uh, to use it in a program. And the way I used it and I saw efficacy is I started with the biocontrol and gave it a two week period, then followed it with, uh, with the copper and I applied it every, at every two, two week interval. 
Okay. But there's some room for uh, more optimization. Uh, we can, uh, this, this is what I'm going to try this year. I'm going to try to, opt I'm, I'll be uh, optimizing some of these intricacies for the timing and the, and the um, amount and so forth and the combinations. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? Any final questions? Try to give everybody just a few minutes if it takes you a little longer to top like it does me sometimes. Mm -hmm. All right, if there's no further questions and I, I don't see any popping up. Uh, I think we will conclude here. Again, we want to thank you uh, for uh, thank Dr. Babesh Duda for his time and his presentation and his expertise. A uh, reminder to all the attendees, we want to thank you for attending this presentation. Uh, don't forget to sign out for pesticide credits in the audience chat box. All educational presentations, the virtual trade show will be available for you to access until uh, April 30th, 2021. Uh, so come back if you missed a presentation or just want to rewatch one. Uh, if you need to search for a service or a product provider in the virtual trade show again, uh, thank you for your, uh, thank you for your participation. And with that, we will, uh, if nothing else comes up, uh, we will, um, uh, conclude this presentation. Thank you, Jason. Thank you all for the, your attention. Thank you, Babesh. Thanks. Thank you, everybody.